Hey guys, what's going on? This is George coming at you with a new video uh, with We Live Technology. And today I'm going to be showing you guys something uh, really cool, and uh, it's going to be regarding remote desktop connection, uh, most often known as remote desktop. And uh, what is remote desktop useful for? Well, it's really useful when it comes to, let's say you're at another you know, you're at another office or you're at your friend's house. You're like, damn, I really need to connect to my computer from home. I wish there was a way to do it. And while there are other ways, uh, using things such as log me in, um, this is one of the more traditional ways and, uh, one of the ways that you're probably gonna have to learn to do eventually if, uh, if you wanna work in the IT field or, um, it's actually something that's not extremely difficult to do but it's nice knowing how to do it um, for those people that don't wanna you know use some kind of log me in uh, remote desktop is probably the way to go so we're gonna go ahead and get started here and teach you guys how to do it so first off um, here on our, our list we're gonna have to try to find out what the IP address of our computer is so um, what we do is go to start and then here in the search, we type uh, CMD for command. I already have a window open, so I'm going to go ahead and open that up. It's going to bring up this window. And we want to type in the command ipconfig forward slash all. You can put a space or without a space. I don't think it matters. And let me um, move that up. I apologize for having a whole bunch of... Uh, um, Nick carts here, uh, but here you go. This is the one I'm looking for. Uh, this is my NVIDIA uh, card, and um, this is my IPv4 address. And this is one of the things that we're looking for. And the other one that we're looking for is the default gateway. Uh, you want to write down these numbers. Uh, you want to write down the default gateway uh, 192.168.77.1. So that's the first, the only number you really have to remember. And, um, and the next one is what we gotta do is we gotta set the IP address, which is essentially the address of your computer inside of your house. You gotta set that to what's called a static IP. And the way you do that, or what static IP is, is, um, static means it doesn't move. It means that this is the IP that it's always gonna have. So that's what we want to do really quick. And it's actually very simple to do. Um, you can go down here to your, um, your connections here. Right click. Open Network and Sharing Center. And go to Change Adapter Settings. And on Local Area Connection, you want to make sure that you select the one that you use. I have a couple of NIC cards and Hamachi and VirtualBox. But uh, this is the one I use. You right click on it. Go to Properties. And on the IPv4 protocol, you click Properties. And right here is uh, where you want to set your IP address automatically. Uh, you can click on Use the Following IP. And the numbers you can type are, um, you know, something simple like 192.168.77.10. And then the subnet mask is usually going to be 255.255.255.0. And the default gateway is the gateway that you uh, wrote down from the command from the gateway over there. You gotta make sure that up in the IP address that the first three subsets are exactly the same. So 192.168.77 then dot whatever you want this computer to be. Alright, so uh, you select a number that's not taken and if there's no IP conflicts that'll, that'll be fine. Another way to do it is by uh, getting onto the router which we're gonna have to do anyway. Uh, so I want to show you guys how to do that. So, again, remember our gateway that we got from our command prompt? That is the address of our router. So, one of the ways to get to the the router is by going to a, um, a window, a uh, browser window, to be exact, and then type in that address that you wrote down. So, in my case, it would be 192.168.77.1 Man, I'm, I'm being very clumsy. I apologize. You type that up in the URL bar. And then click enter. 
usually, depending on most uh, routers, this will work. But because I have a uh, Apple uh, Airport Extreme, uh, and some other routers are different, where you have to use a utility. And that utility usually comes with a disk, or uh, you can download it online. For me, since I have the Airport Utility, so I'm going to go ahead and open it up here. And I have my uh, my router stuff here. Uh, the first thing you want to do is going back to what I said before, setting the IP address as static. Uh, we can go to Internet here, and then DHCP, which is stands for Dynamic Host Control Protocol. And here on the DHCP reservations, uh, I do warn you that it's different for every router. Every router has a different um, has a, uh, I guess, a different way of of uh, configuring it, and you're gonna have to poke around with that and and figure out what it is uh, that you got to do. But uh, essentially, you want to find DHCP reservations, and you want to add the DHCP, and you want to do it by the MAC address. So uh, if I wanted to add another computer, add, put the description, um, continue. And then right here is the MAC address of my of my uh, of my NIC card, and the way you get that is by going back here, and here where the where it says physical address, this number there, as you can see, is the MAC address, which is a, a unique identifier for the network interface card. So you name that, and then you give it the address that you want to give it. In my case, it was 77.10, and then click done. So you can do that, or you can go, you can set it up with a static IP the way I showed you on the um, uh, change adapter options. Okay, so the last thing that we want to do here is um, is what we want to we want to port forward a uh, port number, and remote desktop by default uses a port number thirty three three eight three. Uh, the way we're going to do this is for me. I go to advanced port mapping and right here is where I have my uh my remote. So I'm gonna add and then on the TCP port I put three three eight nine. Yeah, three three eight nine. I'm sorry, I said three three eight three. It's thirty three eighty nine and then the TCP port three three eight nine and the private IP address is gonna be one nine two dot one six eight dot seven seven dot ten, which is the same IP address that we use for this computer. So once you get that done, you click continue and you update the router and you should be good to go at this point. Now, the only thing that's going to be uh that's going to be off is that you won't be you'll only be able to connect to your computer from within your network. And so we don't want that. What we want is to um to be able to find our IP address and be able to use that address from anywhere. So what we want to do is we want to open a browser and go to a website called uh, either whatismyip.com or ipchicken.com and I have it open here. Uh, right here I have my IP address and I'm going to blur that out because I don't want you guys to see that. Um, either way I can change it. Um, one thing that you want to keep in mind is that if you ever reset your router or if you ever um, lose internet connection for whatever reason, your internet service provider goes out, this IP address is going to change, and you have to remember to check it every now and then, and every time you reset your modem, reset your router, you got to check it again, because it will change unless you purchase a static IP from your internet service provider, which I believe it's only about 10 bucks. Uh, I'm not sure if it's 10 bucks a month or whether it's a one-time fee of $10. But um, you purchase that IP address and it'll never change. You set it up on your router and it'll never change. Um, but for most cases, you go here to this website, you get this. It's going to be the same number at all times except when you reset the, the router. So, so now you're at your friend's house and you want to go ahead and connect to your computer. So you put that number, 67, the credentials here. Um, you can use your local printer um, that way you can print out stuff using that 
you can change the experience to get better quality um name and um uh, uh the username and password of an administrator of that computer and when you do that um that will be enough to get you pretty much ready uh to go so if you're having any problems um the only thing that I can also think of is uh before you actually give it a shot go to uh computer then right click on it click properties then you go to remote settings and under remote settings you want to uh click here on the allow connections only from computers running remote desktop and then you want to select the users uh um, it says already right here, George, which is this user, already has access. So this is one of the things that I believe you have to do manually. Uh, so you want to do that before you actually attempt to connect from anywhere else or from when, within your network. So I thought I'd mention that as well. All right, guys. Well, uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate any thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you're new around here. Any feedback is greatly appreciated. And uh, I hope to see you all next time. See y'all later.